All right, so I'm here at a really famous kitchen store in Seattle called Sur La Table. Some people say Sur La Table, but it's French, so Sur La Table. So I thought it'd be fun, since I'm hanging out here at Pike Place Market, that's where it's located, to do a little bit of a tour of this kitchen store and show you what I would buy and what I want to buy. And since I'm, what's that? Oh yeah, I would love that. And um, ask Matt, since he's here with me, what he would recommend. Because you know, I, I'll do this in my kitchen one day, but Matt, he's worked with them. And also, it's just more fun to look at new stuff and maybe pick up some things because I haven't kind of treated myself out to like kitchen stuff. So I'm gonna go through and show you guys what I would recommend you guys buying if you are just starting out on your cooking journey. Espresso, fourth coffee today. I know this is not something that most people would recommend, but I totally would recommend it. And it's kitchen shears. So obviously scissors, but this is so useful for obviously cutting things, but even cutting food. So sometimes it, um, you don't need a cutting board with scissors. And I use this for way more than just cutting the obvious things. And then even when you're serving things, you know, Koreans, they actually do this a lot. So shout out to my Korean viewers, but uh, at Korean restaurants, I'm sure Korean households, they use ch kitchen shears all the time. So get yourself like a decent pair, not just like dollar store kind. This is something that costs money. This one, that's 20 bucks. Okay, now you can step it up. Here's the Zwilling. How much is that? Oh, not that much, 22 bucks. This is the brand I personally would recommend. It's solid, probably really good. Would probably last you almost a lifetime, but at 20 bucks. Most people don't think to have a nice pair of scissors in the kitchen. In terms of knives, my personal favorite is Global, only because Anthony Bourdain recommended them, so I've been using them forever. I have other brands too, but in terms of one that's gonna be more reasonable in price, yeah, Global is the go-to and it is a Japanese brand. Japanese knives are my favorite. I'm kind of biased, but as I mentioned, it's also because of Anthony Bourdain. He mentioned it. What I would recommend as a step above, look for a local knife maker all over the country, all over the world. There's somebody in your city, probably in your region, that makes their own knife. So I would recommend getting a global knife, getting a cheap knife. So what, when I say cheap, it's just more affordable. Matt. I have a question for you, yeah. okay? Um, I recommended to people you should buy a really nice knife from a local knife maker. Okay. Get something that's going to be maybe a little bit more pricey, but reasonable in price, like a global knife. I like global knives personally. Okay. But I said you should also get a cheap knife that you don't give a F what happens to it. Oh, because like a there's. Knife. Just, can you show me a beater knife in here? A beater knife? Like a house knife? Yeah. Honestly, they don't even have what I was going to say. I would say something like... A kiwi knife? Like this. What, what about this? Oh, this kind of... Victorinox? Yeah. That's what I was looking for. Okay, yeah. So Victorinox, this is like the... Show me. Actually, let me like fucking record this too. This is the exact uh, knife, I would say, uh -huh. that is like the house knife in every... How much is this? Let me see. Price-wise. Yeah. Oh, 61 bucks, but still, in the restaurants, this is the type of knife they use. This is the yeah. house knife. So yeah. like, this is a solid beater knife, but also it's just a really good knife. It's got like a great edge, like also the handle is very grippy. It's like one of those like plastic grippy handles. These are solid and you don't have to worry about them getting fucked up because it's not that expensive. They also make smaller ones like that. They have like a whole <coughs> wide array. Um, Here. As you can see, they have a whole wide array. <laughs> don't discount a cheap knife, no pun intended. Uh, as long as you keep it sharp, it's good to go. So here, this is a microplane. Yeah, it's really, I, I use this for so many things like garlic and ginger, Parmesan cheese. How much is this thing? This is $17.50, which is not that much for all the things you would use. So between the kitchen shears, a solid knife, right? Wh whatever price point, and this. The only thing I would recommend is maybe like a paring knife, something a little bit smaller just for those more specific type of cuts. But for the beginner chef, you don't even need that. Just a really good 
chef knives and global is the one I personally go to. I just like how it feels. Okay, so the next thing I would recommend is pots and pans. Now for me personally, when I first started cooking, I got this. This is a super fancy one, the copper core all clad. I bought it and I remember it was a really expensive 10 piece set and it cost me, well, I mean, I don't know if it costs this much, maybe a little bit less, but still it was a lot of money for me to buy it, but I've had it for life. I've had it for life and you know, you can get a, uh, oh, you, I'll recommend a certain sponge, but um, get a solid stainless steel pan, um, but you don't have to get the copper core. I just thought for whatever reason that would be good and it's worked out for me, but it's a bitch to clean. And they say you're not supposed to put it into the dishwasher. I still do, I just don't have the heater function. You can go to other options. Surla table here, they have a 10 piece set, $5.99. Now, I don't have experience using it, but if you need something more affordable, then of course you could go with this brand. Uh, another really good brand, probably maybe the best, Demi Year. This is what Matt uses, um, but this will literally last you a lifetime. In fact, I bought my sister um, one of these uh, pans. Actually, no, I didn't buy it. Matt gave it to me and I gave it to her. So, and she loves this pan. If you can't buy the whole set, I'd buy the nine inch skillet, okay? This is gonna be great for you know, small little things. You know, if you need to cook more, you can maybe do two batches or whatnot. Um, the bigger 11 inch, I think it's it's too big. Even for a big family, I don't use it as much as I use a small one. And then for the pots, I would get a small one and maybe a little bit bigger than this. Um, you probably don't need this. This is more like a uh, uh, five quart saute pan but eventually you definitely want one of these as well. So, I, I mean, if they had a five piece set, that would be awesome. And then, you know, the other thing they sell too is this big pasta pan. Like every set has like a pasta pot, but you don't need, you don't need your pasta pot to be really expensive because all you're doing is boiling water. This is a Surla table Exclusive. Kramer. Oh, yeah. cool. Oh, from Zooling. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So it's not a real Kramer, it's a Zwilling Kramer. Of course, yeah. Uh, but yeah. That's cool. How much is that? $439. $439, but that's a solid knife. It is, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's just a fun thing to get. That's cool. Yeah. You'll see the sidewalls are actually really thin. Yeah. And you can see the seam on the bottom here where they've taken the layering and put the aluminum on the base here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No material on the sidewalk. Got it. So, so this is more affordable. It's Got it. Yeah, $100. $100 bucks for this all clad. Mm -hmm stainless steel pasta pot. And the reason I'm recommending this as the other piece, if you're gonna go more affordable or like what you have to have is because it has a strainer, right? And because, you know, pasta is so popular in almost any American kitchen, this is just a way. And then you could use it as a regular strainer. So the thing about this is if you love pasta, there's something about taking it from the pot with that residual water right into your dish with the sauce. And when you mix it and cook it at the same time, your pasta is gonna taste way better. It's gonna have like a creaminess to it versus if you dump all the water into the sink into a regular strainer. So that's why I always say pasta pot with a strainer. So thank you so much because I've never My seen pleasure. it a hundred bucks. Yeah, well, that's a good deal. Is, is that you actually wanna lock the heat? Yeah, onto yeah. a really good skillet, you know, a really small pot and a big pot. And then if you can, I would highly suggest a stock pot or a pasta pot with an inside strainer and you saw that was a hundred dollar all clad pot that's a good deal i have the expensive version but the hundred bucks you can't beat that one thing that i learned from you is like the most weirdest thing is um food grade kitchen gloves yeah so useful i never used that all these years and i saw you using it i use them all the time i know i use well, them all the time too hold the cameras and I don't want to like to wash your hands I, I love that I can wash my hands yeah, yeah, yeah. though and it's not drying out yeah. my skin but yeah. the reason I bring it up my favorite thing to use to clean my pots because I have a lot of stainless steel pots Bar and pans friend? barkeeper's friend and a steel wool sponge yeah so if yeah. you have the gloves yeah. you, you could be cooking and you I don't even take them off um, the whole session I just wash them all the time right like on my hand and so yeah, Barkeeper's Friend, which is this like white powdery stuff with that steel wool, it will just make all your stainless steel. They, they don't have it, he said. 
because it's a smaller store. They used to have it here. Yeah, the, maybe. But he said they don't have it anymore. But you can get that at any grocery store. The, um, the gloves, the food grade gloves, Amazon. That's where I get them. Huh. Where do you buy your gloves? Uh, I get them at the restaurant store. We should probably do a video there, the restaurant depot store. That would be a good next tour video. Let yeah, me know yeah. if you would like me to go there with Matt. That'd be cool. Let's do it. Okay. I'm not just saying this because I'm here. I actually own these, the smaller versions. Oh yeah, these right here. This is a really cool thing, but um, everybody should have a salt and pepper grinder because there's nothing like freshly ground pepper. And with salt, it, it doesn't matter as much, but I do like the control. But why I like this, I'll show you. Look at this. That's how this functions, like this. It's just so easy and I love that it, you just grab this little ball. It's so convenient and then it has these little settings. So you can have a fine or coarse. It's my favorite one. It's kind of almost gimmicky. It works. Now I will tell you, once it broke on me, so I had to replace it. And so my recommendation is you have to hold on to it between this plastic part and this plastic part just around the edge and then you get it because what happens is you're just grind away right all day long but this is my funny it's funny i wasn't even going to recommend this in the video because i forgot that sur la table has this it comes in all these different colors they also have a red one and a white oh yeah look see they have the white one too i put salt in the white one black pepper in the black one and i put white pepper in the gray one so I can crack white pepper as well. And then there's a red one that I put Szechuan peppercorns, but I never use it. So I, need, I probably need to put something else. Now this thing is not cheap, it's 24 bucks, but mine, the, uh, the two that didn't break, have lasted me for years now. And I, I love the way this functions. Now you can get any one of these. What I would definitely recommend, this is definitely what I would recommend you not doing. Don't just get pre-ground salt, pre-ground, pepper especially and just be good with that now you don't have to get this if you're cooking but there's something about the control so i think it's important especially the pepper i think one of the most underrated tools is a good set of tongs like really good tongs i'll even spend extra money on them because i don't want the ones that are going to break at the um, springs but what's your thought on tongs i love these kinds of tongs yeah you'll see like these ripply ones yeah I don't like this shit. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, plastic, weird, I don't like that. I don't like this stupid thing. That's too okay, annoying. yeah, yeah. What do you like then? I like this, where you gotta put a rubber band on it to keep it closed. Like, oh, these are the best. The you, oh, you do like it when it, it doesn't yeah. lock. To me, these, these are the- Actually, that's the, smart because sometimes well, it breaks, right? Well, also, like, I keep it on like my oven like this. Like, okay, I'll yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Like, my oven door. Interesting. Uh, I like this length of tongue, maybe yeah. a little shorter. Okay. I don't like really long ones. Right. It's just awkward because that's, that's what I was used to, like this half this size. Put in my yeah, you should, try, you should try longer. It's actually better. It's, it's not about the length. It's about how you use it. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. Um, a good set of tongs. I actually have a set that has a plastic ends. I use it for when I'm maybe cooking on a... Uh, like a, a non-stick, but typically I just like my most basic, when I say basic, they're kind of more expensive, um, stainless steel tongs. Now I never thought about what he just said, which is you don't want the ones that lock up. And there's one reason why you wouldn't want that. Sometimes it will break on you. And so it'll be like stuck or whatever. Um, if you buy a really good set though, you can get the ones that lock up by just gravity. There's so many different kinds of spatulas, and if there's something I have a ton of, it's spatulas. Um, for me though, if I was gonna start cooking again, I would buy the one that's most universal. Fish spat. This that's is the move. For the most universal one, you're yes. saying? Fish spat is great for like eggs, burgers, mm -hmm, fish. Mm -hmm. So the beauty in the fish spat is it has like a little edge to it, so you can like really scrape under something mm. and then flip it out. Um, so that's why I love fish spats or anything that's kind of like this. heavier. Yeah. Actually, this one's fucking perfect. I yeah, I was this I was gonna actually say this one, and the the reason I would uh, pick this one or even the one I started off with, like something like this, is because for the spatula, it's also a tool to cut food while you're cooking. Yeah. So I do like that. 
Yeah, or lasagna, like or just like meat. So I like that I can like break everything up with a good but spatula. Also you gotta get the one with the puppies. Oh yeah, <laughs> gotta get. Th and guess what? This is what happens at our house. It's Hello Kitty. Oh really? Yeah, we got Hello Kitty everything. So a good set of tweezers as well is yeah. another must. It, I, I like tweezers that are this size, not like the tinier ones, because then I could be like more precise. But then I can use it for bigger things. Bro, if I were to recommend it, I would actually get one like this maybe on the bigger side. Um, and then I would get one of these, really strong side, okay? And then of course, as you start cooking, you're gonna start collecting all these different spatulas, something like this. This is great for scraping the side of your pot when you have sauces. So um, a spatula like this would be the third thing I would get. Or you get a metal one and you get a plastic one like this. A huge hack for when you're starting your kitchen up and you're spending money, go to the thrift store, go to the secondhand store. When I first moved out at 18 years old, I didn't have a lot of money, literally, I was basically broke. I worked at a YMCA, got paid minimum wage. I loved to cook and I needed to cook because I was on my own. So I went to this thrift store and that's where I bought almost all my stuff. And to this day, I still have some of those pieces but you're talking the cost difference is gonna be 90 to 95% different. So literally something that's a hundred bucks you could get for $5. It's already used, but you wash it, put it in the dishwasher, it's totally fine. In fact, I'm actually kind of curious what Matt would say about that. Cause even pots, I have a pot that's from the thrift store. This is the other thing too, a good ladle. So this is what I'm saying, you could get this at a secondhand store, but obviously if you want to get the fancy stuff, this is 25 bucks, which is expensive, but a good ladle. This is a little bit small. I'd want it to be a little bigger, but you'll use this for way more than just sauces. I like to use this for when I'm uh, doing pasta dishes and I want to put some of that residual pasta water in there. So I, I grab this thing a lot. So definitely get one of these. I think this is the clearance section. Yes, it is. I'm all about the clearance section. I mean, there's different reasons this shelf exists and it's not always a bad thing. In fact, it's never a bad thing. It's just they don't make it or it's last year's colors or whatever. Um, so I love getting, I didn't talk about this. This is probably one of the, the things that you're gonna spend the most money on, but will literally last you a lot, lifetime. Cast iron on the inside, but it's got like some kind of coating. So this was originally 439 bucks, 309 bucks. And I'll tell you this, the only reason this guy is here, probably the color. A lot of people like buying these because of the color. I like buying these or having these in my kitchen because it's so useful. Because it's so dense and thick, it retains the heat. So even boiling pasta, I actually like using this if you have an inside strainer, but especially deep frying, this is the way to go. Um, so yeah, if, if you had to go on the cheap, of course, if you find it at a secondhand store, or if you found this at a, uh, like on a clearance rack, that's like at least 25% discount. So totally worth it. One of the best brands here, Staub. Okay, this is what they use at the restaurants. Matt uses, he's gifted this to me. He has this in his kitchen. I clearance section. Uh, yeah, that, I was saying like totally should go to a clearance, but I said the only reason this is here is probably because of the color, because it's maybe not the right. No, um, actually I could tell you why it's probably here. It's probably because okay. it's the floor model. Oh, there are some more floor models over there on the right. Side. Okay, so which doesn't make it a, bad at all. This is a very new color. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's interesting. It There's nothing wrong with that. It could be a floor model and it could be like maybe it got a chip. scratched, yeah. chipped. Like you never know with these so things. So one thing I recommended to people is totally hit up the clearance section. Yeah, clearance but also, section. Um, I know I don't want to say this too loud because I like the people that like, work I here. I love these Heston pots. Bro, bro, a thrift store. Oh, yeah. I bought my whole oh, yeah. set in the beginning no, from I, a thrift store. I found so many all kinds of thrift yeah. stores. Yeah. So many. Staub, they have all different size pots. Of course, they've got the skillets and the ones like this with the texture on it or the griddle. Get yourself a nice pot. Like this is what I'd say right here. This is a five and a half quart pot with a lid. I just love these. See those little dimples on there? That makes it so that it doesn't, um, so the, the moisture is always collecting or it's dropping down. Um, of course, this one's a lot. 400 bucks, but you will keep this a lifetime. And another reason I like this, it's so dense at the bottom that you can cook foods on it. You could literally 
sear a steak at the bottom of this. So for braising, before you put the liquid in there and make a stew, for curries, there's nothing better. A decent rice cooker, always worth the money. This one's only 65 bucks, so if you wanna go more affordable, totally worth it. But Zoljidushi is one of those things I personally would spend three to 500 bucks on. Yeah, this one's solid, dude, 65 bucks. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna recommend so I don't get all crazy on you guys is a good nonstick pan. But don't don't get the really big ones. Just get one for omelets and scrambled eggs or fried eggs. I mean, this thing is probably next to nothing. Uh, this is a Surla Table brand, but you just can't beat it for eggs specifically. So a good nonstick. Um, I would spend the extra money to get a legit one. Don't get something like at a discount store or something crappy, get something decent. Le Creuset, this is what I have. I like the angle of it. It's got a pretty heavy bottom. Oh, this one's interesting. But yeah, this one, 150 bucks. That's, that's expensive, but I would totally spend this in a heartbeat. But if I could it, I would either, um, I would not buy one of these nonstick at a thrift store. So I would buy this brand new. And yeah, you, you're gonna, you're gonna love it. The thing about this is it doesn't last as long as a stainless steel pan, um, but also it just does something that these pans can do. I could get kind of crazy here, but I'm trying to give people the essentials, okay? Um, the last thing I recommended is a good nonstick pan for oh, yeah. omelets. Oh, already, yeah. already showed them, oh, already okay. showed them, but okay. what's your thought? Like, that's kind of a must have, like a small a non -stick nonstick pan. pan. Is a must, a yeah. must have, and right? And I use my smaller one more than my larger ones. Me, and that's I don't what know why. I, I recommend the small one too, yeah. right? Because the big Which ones. Which one you recommend? I personally have the Le Creuset one, but that's Le just. Le Creuset makes sense. Yeah, Creuset? yeah, yeah. Where? It's right on the other side, right? Yeah, yeah. You see that? Right here, right here. Actually, me and Judy have actually bought That's two or three. Oh, this is. All cut. Oh, yeah. That's no. what I was going to say. I recommend all cut, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, no, I'm tripping. No, Lake Crusade has one, but maybe it, I do have an all cut. Anyways, um, my last question is this I've recommended pots, yeah. pans, the nonstick, stop pot, um, of course, a knife, a microplane, kitchen shears, a pasta pot, tongs the spatula, a ladle. Is there anything I'm missing? I did yeah, chop six. Yeah, they have cheap teak wood cutting boards here. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's. Yeah, so, me. yeah actually, that's the only thing I didn't recommend. So these are teak wood, yeah. which this wood produces naturally more oil, so you don't have to oil it as much. Oh, and I like that. It's cheaper than booze block. So I would, yeah, like this guy right here is only like 120 bucks. Oh, which is way cheaper than a booze for block. sure. I like that it has its own oils already. Right. Yeah, that's cool. So you don't have to like baby it as much as a booze block. Oh, this is nice. I like that. Is that bamboo or real wood? This is teak wood. Oh, teak wood. Okay, yeah. cool. So there you go. Cutting board. That was the last thing I was going to recommend. I was yeah. going to say uh, a cutting board you don't want to buy at a thrift store because you just don't know where it's been. Yeah. Um, but a good one will last you a lifetime, especially if you take care of it. Um, I do like plastic cutting boards for certain things like when I'm cooking a fish or something like that or, or these. Or what, what's this? I don't know what this wood is, but we had a lot at the restaurant. Okay, there you go. I don't know what this is either. It's just paper composite. Ah, it's just cheap, you know, yeah. kind of like a throwaway after yep, exactly. a while, you know. And yes, when you cook a lot, there are certain things that you use, abuse, and they just are done. And you, you do toss them eventually, and you'll learn what those things are. But there's certain things you spend enough money, and you'll keep them a lifetime. Stab is one of those. Uh, uh, items that you would purchase that literally will li last you years and years, decades. You will hand it off to your kids. Hey, if you like that, I want to do more of these. You know, I, obviously I go to grocery stores, I've gone to Costco, um, and eventually I'll go to Farmer's Market or somewhere like Pike Place Market. But if you want to see what I would buy, let me know. What are your must buys when you are getting kitchen gadgets or whatever? So I would love to do this more often. So. I'm gonna actually pick up something for myself now. All right, first ever Surla Tom from the 1970s. First kitchen store maybe in the country, definitely in Seattle. You're talking this brand. And is this business over 100 years old? It's 1972. 1972, okay, not quite 100 years old, maybe like 50 years old, but um, here, look. It's right next to Pike Place Market, so it's a perfect 
area, perfect area for a kitchen store to be. This is why Seattle is secretly the Cook's City. I'm sure cooks know this, but if you're into food and you love cooking, come to Seattle, come to Pike Place Market. So talk to you guys later.